Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, welcome back to the channel. Today I'm going to do something, and I'm going to say a bit of a disclaimer. This is something that I haven't been taught by a experienced opal cutter or anything. This is something I came up with a long time ago, and I've been doing it ever since. So I had a few people over the last couple days since unboxing the latest Boulder Opal parcel that you can check out, the last video. They've asked what I would do with a piece like this. Now, it's just a thin, it's almost like Painted Lady. It's a thin layer of opal on top of an ironstone base. You can see here, there's not much I'm going to be able to do to cut this into a shape. Yes, I can trim off a little bit of this ironstone out on the edge. Yeah, I can trim off this one here. You could, by all means, shape it. But I'm not going to, because it's got an interesting little formation of opal on it. Kind of like it's a bit of a fractured shell. And I've described this technique to a few people privately, but I think it's about time I brought it up onto the channel. Once again, it's not something I advise doing, but it's something that I've liked doing and I, I, I like the results of it. So what I'm gonna do, if I can just dry this off again, is you can see that the stone is still quite foggy. It's quite rough. It's not in the best state, so you don't get to see all that nice colour coming through, and you don't get to see the full patterns coming through. So something I do, and I've called it a specimen polish, it's something I've done on things like this. So this is the tail end of a shell fossil, and I was going to do this one a while back, but it's just kind of been sitting on the bench, which is why I got to pick it up really quickly. It's got a little bit of green in the bottom, you can see here, but it's not enough to bother chopping this up. The most interesting and important part of this stone here is just the full shell feature. But at the same time, when it's like this, when it's rough, it doesn't look great. You kind of want it to be glossy. And one thing I really hate doing is coating opal in some kind of resin just to make it shiny and then just polishing up that coating. I don't like doing that, so what I do is a specimen polish. The general gist is you can attack it a little bit just to get rid of a few of the crusty patches if this one's got any crusty patches like I could hollow this part out here with the sintered diamonds so what I would do is just go with the highest grit sintered diamond I've got just clean up the little bits that I want to I don't want to remove any of these little features of the shell because that's what I'm trying to keep but I want it to shine so every now and then I will just give it a little bit of a dust off a couple of the crusty areas need to go I might touch it up a little bit with the 280 grit Nova just on a few of those patches that I hit with the Sintered Diamond because that's going to leave some uh, deep scratching. And then just where I've hit it with the 280, I might go over it quickly with the 600 but not too much because the 600 does start making it really smooth. And then what I would do is just hit it with aluminium oxide and felt. And I'll specifically use a tip kind of like this so either a worn out tip that I've used from before you can see this one's been worn a little bit angled which is a bit funny but anything like this with a point anything that I can do to get right into these little gaps here into these little cracks and crevices because what I'm trying to do is not remove anything I'm just trying to polish as is and that's what we're going to do today on this stone here. You can see that it's got a lot of cracks. It's boulder opal, so it's got a lot of pitting. And I'm going to use aluminium oxide without getting it stuck. I did a video on that previously, but I'll do it again now for this one, which is a bit more complicated. And what we're going to do is we're going to get all of this opal surface shiny, but we're going to retain exactly how it looks in terms of the actual specimen itself. We're really not going to remove anything. What we're going to do is we're just going to polish any surface we can get a hold of. I will use this little pointed tip here and we'll even get into some of these little grooves and stuff. Of course, if we do trap any aluminium oxide, I'll show you how to get rid of it. All of that kind of stuff. It's really good on fossils. And opal fossils are one of my favorite things. It's one of the main reasons I like opal. And so I've been doing this quite a bit. I have plenty of little shined up fossil pieces. And yeah, I'll just quickly show you how to do it here with this stone. Step one, and the most important step if you're going to do this yourself, soak the stone and rub across the surface. Get rid of any lodged in little bubbles. Those are just pockets to trap your oxide. No matter what kind of polishing powder you're using, it will trap it if you leave little, little air bubbles. Those dry spots, the powder will find a way and it'll bed in there. It really won't happen much if you keep the whole thing wet, but you'd better to be safe than sorry. And instead of dipping the burr into the oxide polishing powder, once you've started using these burrs a few times, I prefer to dip my finger into the solution and just dob it onto the, onto the face of the stone. It just helps prevent any kind of cross-contamination of that iron stone getting onto the burr and then getting into your powder because I've been using this one teaspoon of powder in one cup of water for many, many stones and you don't want anything to carry over. So keep it nice and clean, nice and pure. 
and you'll be uh, yeah you'll be having no problems for a very long time. And you can see here as it's going, the aluminium oxide itself is very white. So when you see it going a little bit yellow like this, that means that it's starting to polish up those surfaces with the ironstone, and it's giving that little little browny yellow tinge. Now don't wash out all of this stuff and go along with the cracks when you're going with the burr. The spinning and rotation just go with the cracks and it'll be much less likely that you grind in some of that powder. It's very, it's very rare that you'll get anything trapped if you've kept it all nice and wet and you can see there I just went over it in basically the wrong direction. But sometimes you've got no choice and it is nice to hit it all from every angle. And you'll be surprised, you want to push pretty hard on this to get it nice and polished and then just give it a dunk in water and we'll have a look here. And you'll see that there is very little to nothing stuck in there so we don't need to whip out the toothbrush and give it a grind, we can, uh, yeah, just give it a rinse. Okay, and there you have it. So the colours are leaping out a little bit more and if I bring the light across the surface you see it's actually bouncing back at us now. So it's fairly shiny but you've still got all of these little imperfections, you've got the little pits, you've got the little lines, you've certainly got all the cracks, and you've also don't have a bunch of aluminium oxide stuck in the face just by keeping it wet. Now this section over here I'll just trim off, so that'll be gone, it's not part of the features or anything like that. I do want to keep the part where it's petering out on the edge, but I just don't want that ironstone over there, and I'll trim this little bit here back so that you don't see it as well, so that it's behind the stone. That's really the only structural change I would do to this one. And yeah, I would do basically the same process on any piece that I really want to keep any little line and feature. It does take a long time with the aluminium oxide, so I do suggest that you go with Sintered Diamonds if you just want to do any of the rough shaping. And then of course you can use the Nova Points. You can go all the way through to 3000 Nova, whatever you really want. It just depends on how you want that surface finish to be. If you go all the way to 3000, you'll get a much flatter surface. But if you pull up at like a 600 or something, you'll get a much more uneven kind of surface. It's quite interesting. You might see it on the channel for a couple other stones when I uh, do them in the future. I haven't been doing a lot of specimen stuff. I kind of do that for my personal collection. But it doesn't make the most interesting videos. So it's not something I'm going to show off a lot. I just thought it might be interesting because I've had about half a dozen people ask me about this piece in particular and how I'm going to polish it up because it's all it's all shattered. So if you've got something that's shattered or you've got features you want to keep, just hit it with something like an aluminium oxide. You can also use a cerium oxide, but then you're not going to get any kind of finish. You can see here on this ironstone, it's starting to get a little bit glossy. That won't happen if you use the cerium oxide. It'll end up staying like this, just a just a matte brown. It's not going to be it's not going to be pretty, and it's nice for it to also bounce light. Otherwise, when you're glossing over it like this, if that doesn't reflect, it looks it looks a little bit dull. And this is just another alternative to spraying it with some kind of resin. You can use a thin resin and just pour it on and let it cure. Or there's little adhesive kind of spray on things like uh, painting protecting as adhesive sprays and stuff. All things that I don't like just because it's not natural and the fumes and all that kind of thing. And I don't want a coating. I'd rather just keep the specimen really as it is. You just want it a little bit glossy, just so that you can see the colour, otherwise that hides fully behind the fog. So hopefully that helps if you come across a piece like that. At least you know how to tackle it now. Good luck, and most importantly, have fun.